Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Well, for quite a while, I've been searching high and searching low and scouring the web for the best bang for the buck gaming laptop. And I didn't quite think one existed again until now. A huge shout out to Lenovo for making this video happen. And now I get to officially share with you all of its quirks and features. Spoiler alert, it's mostly features. As you know, it takes a lot to impress me when it comes to performance, especially in a gaming laptop. You guys know I set the bar pretty high when it comes to how I expect things to perform. My lengthy experience with gaming laptops, it's always been a love-hate relationship. There's always been something to love and something to hate. But with that said, I was very shocked to see how much things have improved since last generation. And I might be left with a laptop that doesn't have me hating anything at all. But as always, I'm gonna give you my personal experience. Nothing held back. This may be a lengthy one, but a very worthy one indeed, folks. So definitely thank you for watching. Diving right into the specs, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS. It's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. It is one of the latest Zen 4 chips. It can deliver better performance and efficiency with the new adaptive power management features. Now, in this particular model, this has a RTX 4060 8 gig with a TDP of up to 105 watts. It is featuring new streaming multiprocessors, fourth gen tensor cores, third gen RT cores, and all that aside, it delivers the most FPS per watt that I have seen. This is the efficiency king. All this packed into a slim chassis, it's even more impressive. It has 16 gigs of LPDDR5X and it is at 6400 speed, which is really fast for DDR5, especially in a laptop. I would normally prefer 32 gigs, but I've actually yet to find myself in a situation where it wasn't enough. I do know situations like that will come up, but if you want the 32 gig option, you can look for that online as well. This one came with a one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe, and for storage, that's plenty, but it is upgradable in case you were wondering, it's very easy to do so. We'll dive deeper into the specs as we go around the laptop, but so far everything is impressive. I was quite shocked at how well this 4060 performed and even beat my 3070 laptop with a much higher 130 watt TDP. Transitioning to a gaming laptop with an OLED screen has been a game changer. It's been enhancing the gaming to an addictive level, basically. It's almost like I've been rediscovering some of these games with colors and depth that I didn't think previously existed on gaming laptops, especially in this price range. Oh, and I forgot to mention the best part, the pricing. Currently, as of filming this laptop, you can get it for well under 1500 bucks. So my prior experience upon a comparison is my MSI GP66 laptop, which we're gonna dive into later, but it had an underwhelming i7-10750H, and it was paired with an RTX 3070 Max-P. And both of those ran hotter than the sun. I had to do extensive mods just to tame those temps. But at the time, it was the best laptop you could get for under 1800 bucks when it launched. And it scored very high on reviews as well. The screen though, it was a major letdown. It was a 144 hertz IPS display. It was very underwhelming because it just didn't cut the mustard when it came to playing games, especially FPS shooters. It was very lacking in color and black level detail. So ever since that experience, I was left with a very sour taste and bitterness that made me feel like getting the visual quality and FPS that I wanted and needed was out of the question for anything close to my budget. Now in my prior experience, out of the way, we can just toss that thing in the garbage. Some of the first things that stood out overall were the image quality, and most importantly, the latency. I forgot to mention how good the latency was. Are you a COD bro? Are you a COD gal? Are you a super sweaty gamer? or you just wanna stop getting shredded bits by all the other sweaty players on your favorite shooter game. Well, this could be the leg up that you actually need. I can tell you in simple terms, OLED seemed to have a lower latency, and I also didn't believe it until I saw it for myself. The latency and the response time just felt so much different and better comparing these two laptops. It even felt faster than my Samsung G9. This is a beautiful 14 and a half inch 2.8K OLED. It has 120 hertz variable refresh rate, 400 nit brightness, HDR 500, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut for all your content creation needs and gaming. It even comes pre-calibrated with X-Rite Pantone certification. The WQXGA Plus resolution, it's extremely impressive as well. It is a 2880 by 1800 resolution. That means it's better than 1440p. 
closer to 4K, but not quite. But if you were to tell me it was a 4K display and I didn't know any better, I will believe you. Now that I've ran about how good this thing looks, let me tell you the other thing you guys need to know. You know I was probably destined to talk about the cooling. My prior experience with gaming laptops, it always included an overwhelming fear of thermally throttling. Every laptop I've seen has had a weak cooling system in the slim form factor. My MSI laptop being nearly 9mm thicker still didn't even cut the mustard. This offers the Lenovo Legion Cold Front 5.0. It leverages both software and hardware and even includes two redesigned 3D fan blades and it'll adjust voltages and fan speeds automatically in software to keep those temperatures in check. And even on quiet mode, it kept the thermals well within reason and performed exactly how I would expect. I was quite impressed to see the temps not swinging in the danger zone like most other laptops. They were around upper 60s, low 70s, pushed to the 9s. So you can see we have very beefy heat pipes and these two fans over here on the outer side of the laptop so it can bring in cool air and exhaust hot air how it needs. It brings in the cool air from the bottom of the laptop and exhaust it this way and exhaust it this way as well. You seem to have two very beefy little heat sinks right here with all the heat pipes connecting. It seems like it's covering the VRAM. Everything is covered and cooled here. This is a very efficient design. These look like very good and well-made heat pipes. Over here, you have your Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. You do have another NVMe slot over here, I believe. This is where your storage goes. It's very easily upgradable with just one screw. The battery, it's also replaceable. So if you ever needed to replace this battery, it's very easy to get into. Removing these heat pipes is very simple and straightforward. So if you ever wanted to redo the thermal paste or anything like that, you'll be more than able to do so. Oh, and it does have an aluminum bottom side, and it has this thermal pad here and this thermal pad here to help transfer some of that heat. I believe one of these is coming off this NVMe drive, and the other is actually pulling some heat off of this Wi-Fi chip, which is pretty interesting. I haven't seen that before. And you've got another thermal pad here. I'm guessing that's probably a MOSFET or something. But everything is cooled. It's very well done. Absolutely. Very well done. Very impressed. And taking apart is very easy. You just got screws around the outside here. Now, when we open the laptop back up, you'll see this is the Lenovo Vantage software. It's an all-in-one app. It makes it very easy to have full control over your laptop, featuring features like network boost that can prioritize games or tasks. Under thermal mode settings, you can see performance, balance, quiet, and custom. Under custom, you'll see manual CPU and GPU overclock settings that are very easily laid out and they allow you to overclock both CPU and GPU. You can even enable exclusive use of the NVIDIA discrete graphics cards by checking out this hybrid option. I no longer need to download third party apps or break my way into the hidden BIOS options like I used to. You can even change the refresh rate on the fly by hitting function and R and that can change it between 60 and 120 Hertz. So you can save some battery or you can just dial in a refresh rate that better suits the game you're playing. Now, if you wanna know the best settings overall for just full out power, I'm gonna show you what I use. Now this is plugged in of course, but what I like to do is I hit function plus Q and I make sure it is illuminated red. That way I know I'm on the max performance mode. The other colors are blue for quiet and white for balanced. In balanced, you can even enable the AI engine to overclock and tune it all for you. Back in performance mode, what you're going to want to hit, check that, you'll hit the settings, you'll hit proceed, and then you'll do GPU offset for the core at 65, and then for the VRAM, you'll do 325. If you run into any instability or higher temps, you can dial them back or just undo them all together. It does make a few FPS difference in some games that might be a little bit more demanding, and it can handle it very well and still keep the temperatures well then check. So again, you've got tons of features in here, adaptive refresh, you can get into your Nehemic software through here, you can do hardware scans to check and see if anything's not working properly. But touching back on the software, the system updates are much easier than any other manufacturer out there that I have tried to date. That speaks volumes because I've used them all at one time or another. And this one is shockingly good. Nothing seems rushed or overcooked about this program. Now moving on to sound, it does have speakers. The speakers are speakers. 
you don't really expect much out of a gaming laptop anyways because they know that 90% of us are going to be using our headset or our headphones, right? But the speakers, they sound about the same as most other laptops. Nothing bad, but this Nehemic audio software can help you dial it in to your personal taste. You can get a little bit more bass or a little bit more treble. You can do virtual surround sound. There's a lot of good features in this app, especially if you're using a headset. That's where I noticed the most difference with using this app. Now moving into all the ins and outs of these ports, let me show you. We have two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2s on the side and one of them can be used to charge up a device while the unit is not powered on or plugged up. It also allows power delivery through here. So if you have a charger or a dock that supports charge pass through, you can use that as well. Now, speaking of docks, we have this sent over by Ugreen. Thank you, Ugreen. This is the new 13-in-1 laptop dock that I used. It does have gigabit ethernet. It also has four USB-A, and it also has display port, which is the primary reason I wanted to use it because I have a higher refresh monitor that really likes display port and HDMI is really only good for up to 120 Hertz on my display. So if you're looking for a good dock that has tons of ins and outs, it's got an extra headphone jack here, you've got a memory card reader, it's built well, it's very strong aluminum housing, this would be what you need if you need a dock to give you some extra ports or to give you display port or multiple HDMIs. This is the kind of thing that you should throw in your laptop bag, honestly, if you have a laptop. This thing comes in handy more than you could ever imagine. Once you have one, you'll probably never want to live without it. You can also use this on your RG Ally, your Lenovo Legion Go. You can use it on anything that supports using a dock. So thank you, Ugreen, for sending this over. We'll be doing a deeper dive on this later, but I just wanted to take a minute to show you what dock I did use and did confirm that it did work. Now moving to the back, we have two USB type A 3.2 as well, and they are Gen 2. We have the HDMI port that can do 8K 60 Hertz, or it can also do 1080p 120 Hertz or 1440 or so on. And then you've got your charger port right here, and it can be inserted any way. It's not a, a priority to have it one way or the other. It just plugs right in. I like that because if I'm plugging my laptop in the dark, I don't have to like focus on the charger and make sure I'm not going to bend the pins or screw anything up. That's a huge win right here. And then you can also charge it through USB-C as well. Now moving on to this side, we have the SD card reader and it worked as intended. No issues at all. We have the e shutter to turn your webcam on and off. And then we even have this 3.5 millimeter headphone mic combo jack. And I did try out some IEMs and they worked incredibly well. And that was my preference overall. Now, moving on to the webcam. If you're wondering, it's a webcam. It can do webcam things. It's a full 1080p HD and it has the e shutter for privacy. And it even has a built in mic. It's got you covered for what you need to do. It's nothing over the top, but it works pretty good. Now, touching back on the internals right here, this is the keyboard that it comes with. It's very nice. It has plenty of travel and pressure on each key to give you a good and positive gaming experience or typing experience. The keys also have a nice white backlight, which I actually have learned to prefer because it's better than having RGB puke all over the place, blinding you in the middle of the night. And it's also better to play FPS games where you don't have RGB flashbangs going off every few seconds. And it just looks so much better with this clean and sleek lighting complementing this storm gray anodized aluminum top and bottom and the rest of the body. It just looks so good. I actually like this now. It's more of a sophisticated laptop. So as you get older in life, you, you kind of appreciate the finer details and quality and fit and finish. And it does feel good. It's got very minimal uh, squish down, but I think that actually helps give you a little bit of springiness in the keys so they positively press and they're not loud. You're not you're not clacking and making a lot of noise. It sounds really good. Now the trackpad, it's very smooth and silky. It's got a buttonless glass surface that does support precision touchpad PTP. Now with the slim model, it still does have a pretty good battery. It's a 73.6 watt hour battery. 
and it also supports up to two hours of runtime on just a 15 minute charge. So if you only have a few minutes to charge, well there you go, you could charge it up and still get a good bit of use off of it. But let me show you what this laptop is fully capable of and I'll give you my full rundown and overall thoughts and experiences as we go. All these benchmarks were done with optimized settings and it was plugged in just so you can see what's the best that it can do. But jumping into Cinebench R23, it's primarily a CPU workload benchmark and it's going to highlight the capabilities of the CPU only. However, the score, 17,421. That's insane. That's more than twice as fast as the i7-10 750H. Now moving on to Time Spy, we got 10,862 on the overall score. But looking deeper, you can see that the GPU score is 10,844 and the CPU score was 10,971. That means this system is extremely well-rounded and the pairing of the CPU and GPU are seemingly the perfect balance. It's a match made in heaven, truly. Now diving into some games, you can see I've been able to enjoy higher graphic settings and I'm still getting the FPS that I desire. Now at Forza Horizon 5 with mostly high settings with medium ray tracing on, we were able to get an impressive 134 FPS with a resolution set at 2880 by 1800. Very stable FPS indeed. Moving on to maxing everything out to the roof, you can see our averages will dip down to 96. However, the difference in quality is worth the FPS difference, and in racing games, you're probably not going to notice it anyways. Now moving on to the next game I'd like to show you is Forza Motorsport. It's not as optimized as Forza Horizon 5, but with everything on medium, we could hit a very smooth 85 FPS. This is a heavily GPU bound game, and it really puts the GPU straight to work. Now Control is the next game you'll see here. It felt and looked so much different on an OLED. I found myself playing this way more than I ever have for that reason alone. Even with everything turned up high, you can still get a very enjoyable and beautiful experience with a 90 FPS average. Much higher if I turned on some of the visual candy, but with a game like this, I wouldn't. You simply have a better experience having better visual quality with this particular game. If you want a good gaming experience to let you escape, you can also try Alan Wake. Alan Wake, we can easily get a pretty consistent 60 FPS on high settings with DLSS quality rendering 1920 by 1200 DLSS frame gen on. Very smooth, and it looks so good with this HDR OLED. Now jumping into my favorite game of all, which is a love-hate relationship, I'm currently loving it again, but you can see we can lock the FPS at 120 and get a consistent 120 FPS, barely ever dipping below that with some adjusted settings. I really enjoyed how much quicker and smoother the game felt with an OLED. For a while, I had been a little salty at Call of Duty on my ROG Ally because of the consistent bans everyone was getting. But when I played Call of Duty on this laptop, all of those worries and feelings fell apart. And I was happy to play my favorite game again, wherever and whenever I wanted. Lastly, we can see the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. We got around 101 FPS average with 2880 by 1800 resolution with high settings and DLSS on quality. Looks and feels buttery smooth. So in summary, 10 out of 10, would recommend this laptop without any doubts at all. I really have never seen a more well-rounded laptop and it really helped open my eyes up to a whole new world. Nothing about this laptop left me wanting or needing for more. I was left with an experience that didn't leave a sour taste in my mouth. I had no bitterness towards this laptop, only praises. But if you force me to say anything negative about this, it would be a hard challenge, but I would say it's the speakers. I would probably rather have them upward facing rather than downward facing, but it's just because of the way my ears work. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's just personal preference but you do get better lows with the down-facing speakers, so I get the reasoning behind their choice. Again, it's merely preference. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review, mixed with my thoughts and ramblings, but as always, you know, I give it to you straight, with nothing left out. I would love to hear what you think about your laptop or this laptop in the comments, and also feel free to hop by the Discord. Well, again, thank you Lenovo for supplying this laptop for review. I'm gonna be really sad when it's time to send it back to its homeland at Lenovo. After this experience, I for sure have Lenovo at the very top of my list for all my recommendations for gaming laptops, for friends and family who are looking for them. Currently, I was very impressed with the performance and I didn't feel like anything was sacrificed or overlooked. Well, well done Lenovo, like absolutely well done. But until next time folks, I hope you guys have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.